All right, so in this one, we're gonna talk a little bit about search. Search is a pretty cool task to learn how to do, and it's really not that difficult. There's certain things about it that can be very difficult, yes, uh, but at the basic level, it's actually pretty straightforward. And the way it works with Django is also fairly straightforward. So uh, what we're gonna do is add a search function into this search bar up here, and we're gonna have it search initially we're just going to have it search on amazon it's actually going to run a search on amazon so let's actually get the form itself the search form and the input itself set up here and we do that by going into components on bootstrap and then to navbar and if you scroll down a little bit we will see that there um, the navbar we're actually wanting is this one and we're going to be using this search function a lot of these things in here will look exactly like our navbar with the exception of this stuff. So if I see placeholder search and then it says form, so I want to grab the entire form because it is a form, it's a type of web form. So we're going to copy that whole thing. So form to form and notice it's outside of a list item here. So if we go into our navbar.html and we scroll down, we'll see, hey, here's a list item and here's another one and here's another one. And then we have navbar right so if i look at this i see it's in between two list items one's navbar and navbar right navbar navbar right okay so that's where we want to put it so again copy this and paste it in here and we can i'm just going to tab over everything over just so i can make sure that i see the form so again it's outside of this ul class this first one and then this second one and notice it says navbar left so that just means it's going to pull it to the left um, to check I mean, just that it does pull to the left, we can cut out that first UL class, go back in here and do a refresh, and there we go. I'm actually gonna leave it just like that. I don't really want that many buttons, just like Amazon. I mean, if I'm gonna go after and be similar to someone, why not make the search right front and center just like how Amazon does? Now, of course, Amazon has a lot of other stuff, but they put all the sign in and the cart and all those things on the right, so we're gonna go after that too. Now. I'm not gonna have these links up here just like Amazon. I mean, we're not making Amazon, right? So we're just making our own little e-commerce site. Uh, but I do wanna make sure that search is front and center. So now that we actually have the form, let's actually test out searching. All right, so going back in here, we look at our form and we've got the role of search. So the actual form itself is what we need to look at and also the input here. So if I, add a action here so action equaling to an empty string that means it's going to submit this form on the page that i'm on uh, wherever that's going to be but we don't want that we want it to actually go to amazon and search there so the actual field for it we'll have to go to amazon to figure out so i'm going to search t-shirt t-shirt in amazon and i look up here and i already see that there's this new url for it and a lot of these things, I'm not sure exactly what is gonna work. So I'm gonna take off wherever you see these ands, that's where we can kind of work with, or a, qu uh, a question mark, a question mark or an ampersand. That's gonna be different um, variables or different parameters within that URL. It's just kind of a standard format for URL. So let's, let's just take off the and keywords and delete that. Well, that is not the search, so we know already that that has to be there. So I'm just wanting to limit it and make it as, as simple as we possibly can. So I'm gonna get rid of all this stuff, URL, and then I see that there's this quote here, so I can get rid of that, but I can also keep that quote there, or excuse me, if there's the question mark there, I can get rid of the ampersand because all that question mark is doing is starting off the parameters, and then every time you wanna chain parameters together, use an and. You don't have to know that, that's okay, uh, but let's just use this. All right, so that's working. And then ref probably means reference. Uh, I'm not positive, but it most likely does. So let's get rid of reference and boom. Okay, so now we see a bunch of things that it's more likely for us to work with. We have field keywords, and then we have a keyword here, and we have a question mark. Um, so that's gonna start the actual search and then S for search. All right, so let's actually copy part of this URL or we'll copy the whole thing. Let's copy the whole thing, copy that URL and go back into our project. I'm gonna paste it inside of action. All right, so I paste that whole thing into action. And now let's go back into our search, do a refresh and just hit submit. And it takes us into um, Amazon. 
but it's it got rid of that action. It got rid of the field of keyword. Well, that's because the action itself it doesn't it's not going to have the parameters come through. Those parameters would be on one of the inputs. So when we put an empty input, it's going to actually kind of get rid of those parameters. So let's add uh, the input correctly, and all we do is name it. And I'm going to name it what they have it named is, which is field keywords. So I'm going to cut that, name this field keywords, and I can probably get rid of all this stuff. All right, so we save that and go back into ours, do a refresh, and now let's search t-shirt, press enter, and there it goes. It's actually ran and it worked and it went onto, uh, onto Amazon and actually searched t-shirts. I mean, your results might look different based on where you are in the world and if you're a man or whatever, because uh, Amazon's smart like that, but really we just created our first search form and it's very simple, right? It's straightforward, it's pretty easy to do. So now let's actually bring that back into Django. Now the action, we don't want the action to go to Amazon anymore. We just want it on our own. So let's actually follow with their URL pattern and use S as where we want to send it. So since we want to send it to S, well, we need to create a URL for S. So in our URLs, we need to make something just like what we did with products or, or the single product, we need something for search. So I'm actually going to copy this top one and paste it and then just write S. And then now I'm going to do product.views.search and we'll call it search. All right, so we need to create this view. So in our views, we go to define search and it's going to take in a request and we can have it render all the same stuff. All right, uh, but in this case, I'm actually going to just have it render that and have no context whatsoever because we will get back to that. All right, so let's actually try it out with our new search. And I'm going to print request and t-shirt, hit submit. Oh, I got a refresh in here. And it goes, notice it says field keywords, just what, like what we saw on Amazon. Uh, but we don't have any page found for this exactly. So let's see if our URL is correct. Nope, it's not. We need to get rid of that first slash there. And let's run it again. Okay, now it shows the page. It doesn't have anything actually coming through. And the keywords, field keywords is empty. So if I change this to ABC, it changes it to ABC. So now we need to be able to get this argument or the data that's in here. But field keywords might work for Amazon, but it's a little long for us. So let's change field keywords to just being Q for query, like what we're searching. So in our nav bar, we're gonna go to our input name and change this name to Q. All right, so if we go back in here and do a search, and now it says Q equals to that. So all that did was change it to the name. So we could say search, we could call it search if we wanted to, and then it's gonna change it to whatever our search is. Uh, there's all types of things that we could do here. And then we could even chain it together with other ones. So um, with ABC and cat equals to ABC. So that would be, let's say, for instance, the main, uh, main search, and then let's say, for instance, the next thing would be like a category, and you could start appending things depending on your input. But that's getting a little advanced, so let's keep it back at search. All right, so now that we have that, well, we'll keep it at Q, like we initially set out to do. So we'll keep it at Q, and now we just need to grab that value. Once we can grab that value, we can make this search function a lot better. So let's do, let's look at our request. So in our, it's been posting our request, and if I scroll up to the very top of the request, um, so we have our search here, so here's where the request starts. We see get and post. So get is what it's doing, it's actually getting information, and it says search equals to ABC. Well, we don't want search, so let's try that one more time, ABC, or this is what we are looking for. Hit submit, and notice how it, escapes everything and puts plus and all that. Uh, it's still at search, so maybe I didn't save this. So let's save this and do a refresh in here and do this is what I am looking for again. And now it's back to Q, all right? So let's look at the request all over again. And if we scroll up, we're looking for the WSGI request right there. And we see our query, so Q is, this is what I'm looking for. So we can actually try to get Q with our request, right? So like in our view, we can actually try and get what the value of Q is. So we'll do try, or actually I'll just leave out try for now. I'll do request.get and then get, 
and we'll do Q, all right? Because that's the name that we're looking for. So if I refresh in here again, we same thing that, that just happened, but if I scroll down to the bottom, it now gives me that value, right? So if I change this to something else, so let's search value, and it searches value, and then now there it is. The only bad thing is if we don't have anything in Q, we might run into some errors. In this case, it says none, uh, but what if that's actually not anything and we need to use Q and all that? So we'll just say try. Q equals to that, except Q equals to none. All right, and then we'll say if Q, we'll say template equals to something in particular, possibly context being something in particular. Let's just do that. So query equals to Q, else we'll do that. All right, so if Q exists, then we'll put it into a page called results. Otherwise, it's just gonna be an empty home page, basically. So results, and let's actually go back in, research, do ABC, and now it says template does not exist, so let's create it real quick. I'm gonna copy the single.html and put in new file, and call it results.html, paste in single, make sure we called it results, we did, and query is the context, so I'm just gonna change, get rid of all this stuff, and change this to being query and do searched for query do a refresh and now we have our search now of course we can we there's not a whole lot we can do yet so if I hit submit it's empty see it goes away um, but if because there's nothing actually inside a queue and if I do ABC it goes search for so it's actually changing our context as well as our template right um, so this is something we've done quite a bit now, now the fact that I do have this search results, I can actually start to work with Q. So if Q is in here, then I can just go to products. Let's just grab this. So I'll do just a very simple one, products.objects filter title equals to Q. All right, so it's gonna see if it can get products filter title equals to Q. So then I'll do comma products and that's products. We're gonna make this search function smarter later, but for now, let's just take a look at this. We're gonna use this, this context variable in our results and we'll just put that in. We're not gonna loop it in yet or anything like that. So let's actually search for a product and I'll just say product, hit enter. Ah, I don't have anything, so let's say product again. Looks like we're still not coming through with something. So let's actually go back into our view and see that it says product title equals to Q. But if we do underscore underscore I contains, this is just a filtering function that Django has. So I contains Q. So if, if the Q or the query is within there, we can do a refresh and now we see product one, two, and three. And that's good. That's what we want to see. So let's say for instance, we want to search for t-shirt. We just type out T and now it's showing the query for T. Now again, we are gonna make this actual search function a lot better here shortly. Otherwise, this is a pretty good start to actually doing search on our own uh, projects. And maybe we just wanted it to be that simple, search titles, right? Maybe that's it. Maybe all our search function would be, instead of the placeholder saying search, saying search product title. And then we go back in here and we see search product title and that's all we want that then we're done we don't have to do a whole lot more other than loop through and link stuff up and all that but we want to make a smarter search so we'll do that soon if you have any questions on this let me know otherwise let's keep going